for people to recognize, if you're a young faculty member, in a lot of places, if you're a young member of a news department, and you have the wrong views, meaning conservative, you have no career. This is just the most open, blatant example of the new fascism, which says, if you don't agree with us 100%, we have the right to punish you, but, but unless, you? unless you're like Hillary and like Barack Obama, and you recant. So they both had the same view in 2008 as he did. How often do you hear Newt Gingrich and Andrew Sullivan agreeing? 738 here on News Radio 1620. I'm Andrew McKay. Andrew Sullivan, noted gay um, activist, pro gay activist, um, controversial figure, but he uh, looked at the ouster at Mozilla of their new CEO, Brendan Ike, and he says that it is a terrible, terrible thing. He, um, he said, uh, Will he now be forced to walk through the streets in shame? Why not the stocks? The whole episode disgusts me as it should disgust anyone interested in a tolerant and diverse society. If this is the gay rights movement today, hounding our opponents with a fanaticism more like the religious right than anyone else, then count me out. If we are about intimidating the free speech of others, we are no better than the anti-gay bullies who came before us. Andrew Sullivan getting a lot of heat over this. And I wanted to uh, make sure that we got another point of view on here on this particular topic. So I asked Dave Pakman to come on. He is the host of the internationally syndicated TV and radio program, The David Pakman Show. He's also a contributor for the media to GLAAD, the Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. Uh, David, welcome to Pensacola Morning News. It's a pleasure to be with you. Hey, so um, the first thing I wanted to ask you is... um, how active, if at all, was GLAAD in pushing for the, uh, the ouster of Ike? Uh, were they active in this at all? And, uh, you know, sort of what's your take on this whole affair? Yeah, to the best of my understanding, GLAAD had no role at all in calling for or pushing for uh, the resignation. You know, my point of view as a progressive, as a heterosexual straight ally who understands the importance of LGBT equality, I think that conservatives small government conservatives, pro-business conservatives, should be applauding what happened in this particular sense. This was a decision that was made completely unaffected by the government, meaning it wasn't an issue of free speech. It was not a decision that was made because of strong-arm tactics. And remember, nobody has a right to be the CEO of of an organization. So what happened here was that Mozilla evaluated in the same way that free market advocates want whether the position of Brendan Ike was going to be good or bad for them overall. And their business decision, which conservatives like businesses to be able to make, was it's better if he's not here. So we have uh, protected status in a lot of places, though though not everywhere, uh, for people with certain sexual orientations. Uh, If a company decided that uh, it's not in their best market interests to fire a newly hired person who turns out to be gay or even was known before the fact to be gay, you'd also be okay with that? Well, you can actually already do that in many states. and In fact, that's one of the areas where we have to actually push for equality. If you want that, that's a hypothetical question, which you can ask me, of course. But if that's the case, I would ask you the question of, well, what if you want to hire or, or fire someone rather after you find out that they're uh, Christian and you don't want Christians working for you? The hypotheticals involving protected classes aren't relevant here. This was a free market business decision made on a donation that was made, and what that reflected in terms of the individual's views. Being born black or being born gay or or having a a particular religion, that's completely different. It's a comparison that some on the right are trying to make, but it's a faulty comparison if we really understand the fundamentals of epistemology, how we know things, discrimination. So I, I, I think it's a false comparison. Well, I mean, what I'm getting at is simply your point where you said that the difference in this case is that it wasn't government pressure, it wasn't government censorship, it wasn't a public situation, and it wasn't an entitlement. Nobody's entitled to be CEO. Uh, but right. he was clearly uh, ousted. He very much wanted the job. Obviously, he was qualified for the job uh, in the sense that he had the technical and background history with uh, Mozilla. Uh, and so your distinction, you're saying that because it's a private company, it's okay. That's why small market cons- or small uh, government uh, free market conservatives should support it. I'm just looking for a kind of consistency that, you know, if you're going to be sort of libertarian across the board, uh, fine. Uh, but what I have heard historically is, no, you cannot fire somebody because they're gay, but now it is okay. Or you cannot, you cannot push for the resignation of somebody because they're gay, but now it's okay to push for somebody's resignation because they are anti-gay. Well, you, but, but Andrew, I think what you're missing here is that 
the comparison is completely wrong because in so many states in this country, you can fire people for being gay. So we all. But, you, but you're that. opposed to that. Comparison. But I mean, you're but you're opposed to that, right? I am, and it, it's a protected class. And this goes now. It goes beyond my opinion, right? That's the thing where now we're starting to to mix and and muddle things. I am not a libertarian, right? So my argument was one, so you and I can kind of have a thought experiment and explore this maybe in a way you haven't thought of. But in posing the hypothetical, I'm not going out there and saying this also libertarian idea that we should be able to hire, uh, fire people rather uh, because they're disabled, for example, or because of their race or any of that stuff. I don't believe that. But what I'm saying is if you are part of the small government libertarian right, you should have no problem with this at all. One of the other um, things, you know, sort of historically, when you look at the gay rights movement, has been the demanding of the question, number one, how does this affect you, you know, what somebody's behavior is in the bedroom, and number two, particularly when it came to the military dismissals under Don't Ask, Don't Tell and before, is, uh, look, we need the most qualified people in these positions. Uh, You shouldn't be getting rid of capable people just because of some uh, sexual peculiarity. Uh, couldn't the same case be made here that this is a highly qualified, capable individual who shouldn't be gotten rid of uh, or pushed out because of the point? We want to show tolerance to him. But also, how does it affect anybody if he's not changing policies at Mozilla and he's not, uh, he's, you know, he's not doing anything as far as Mozilla matters that would affect gays? This is a really great question. So first of all, just to be completely clear, in the premise of your question, you called homosexuality a sexual peculiarity. I reject that definition at its face. So I'll answer the question, but I just want to make clear for other people who will eventually hear this that I don't agree with that framing. So the question is a good one, which is, uh, he obviously had other skills. Why, why, why didn't that, those supersede the fact that he made this anti-gay donation? That's a question I could personally speculate on, but I wasn't an insider. What I can tell you is this. If after a week of his taking over, all of those great credentials, the great ideas he has, all of the good things he's going to do, if those haven't made all of the constituents of Mozilla realize that that's really the great thing about Brandon Ike and the donation doesn't matter, then that's a free market resolution where in spite of all of these great things about him that may or may not exist, the anti-gay donation was still the thing that was troubling people the most. And again, that's just the free market. Well, I think, I mean, I think that's a, it's, 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 it's a wonderful, no, no, it's, it's it's just a, I mean, I think that's an interesting way to look at it, but I think you're giving way too much credit to the sort of uh, savvy rationality of the average uh, media consumer. What they did is they went to the OkCupid website and they saw, hey, this guy is anti-gay. We need to get rid of him. They weren't looking into his credentials and background. They were reacting to this one. And this is why the kind of McCarthy Atheist analogy has been drawn. It's this one particular thing that has been the flashpoint. Yeah, but the thing about that, Andrew, is that that's that that's if you're basing it off of this kind of public opinion. But there's every indication that if it were only public opinion, this may not have blown up so much. But those who were directly associated with Mozilla ultimately felt that there was a breach of trust, and that's really what it came down to. Very good. Hey, David, thank you so much for joining us. I always love to have people on who disagree with me. Uh, Clearly we do, uh, but hey, that's what makes for good radio. Uh, David Pakman is the host of The David Pakman Show, internationally syndicated TV and radio, and he is a media contributor for the Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. You can get more information about him at David Pakman, P-A-K-M-A-N.com. Hey, Dave, thanks for joining us. Hope we'll have you on again sometime. Glad to do it anytime.